Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the Fence of Shades speaking. I'm gonna give you guys like a full tutorial video now on like the whole section A of the uh, Defense of Shades uh, out of point guide for squad leaders and players. So as you guys saw, like I didn't really go too in depth um, on the loadouts and stuff, and just really mentioned the most important things because a it's really complicated to talk about, and b it would take you know a long period of time to even grasp like the whole like concept of loadouts in general especially for point holders so in this video i'll try i'll do my best to try to explain like every single detail possible but i will be leaving many things out at the same time uh at least you know, like like you know the, the things that aren't as important they're all important but you know they're not as crazy right so cool with that said um let's get back into it if i mentioned you know within channel. the uh, loadouts classes and stuff you have five to six heavies four medics one or two engineers and one infiltrator this is like really important, especially for a loadout class, simply because we want A, lots of uptime, B, the ability to battle enemy heavies, and C, to stop over pop, right? And that's the key. And also provide intel, uh, which, which the infiltrator does. It's kind of like your mo the most balanced you can get in terms of like having a squad loadout, because, you know, the infiltrator is going to provide you with recon, the engineers will provide you with ammo and shields and utility. The medics will obviously provide uh, uptime and keeping the squad alive, and having four of them is essential in the squad, so you can have enough people kind of everywhere, helping everybody else. Uh, my general rule is there should be at least one medic per three players, which is where the four comes in. You have four medics, right? Then you can split them among like your fire teams of three. On top of that, the uh, additional medic that's can kind of rotate around. The five to six heavies uh, are for demolition, right? For killing enemy maxes, for stopping enemy over pop uh, by putting a lot of bullets down range and you know to uh tank shots for the rest of the squad so that's where it kind of comes in all right with that said uh let's get to the loadouts so here is the really complicated uh set of loadouts that i made available to you guys there's a lot of things to really discuss here so i'll really only touch upon the heavy the medic i'm going to not really talk about the last or secondary because it's for like vs players uh, but you can probably get a good idea of what Lasher does since it is the only suppression weapon available in the game. I'm going to talk about Carapace, uh, the shields. There there are other loadouts here. Obviously, Infiltrator is pretty self-explanatory for recon and for EMP and stuff. Uh, but we'll only mention the ones I just talked about. So we can kind of like breeze through this pretty quickly, A, and then I don't overload your mind on like loadouts and stuff. Alright, let's start with the Heavy Assault. So, honestly... This loadout here is just basically pick a nice LMG you really like and use it. Secondary, the underbosses, which is like concurrent in most of these loadouts that are provided to you, is for two simple reasons. One, the underboss allows you to have quick draw time. And B, on top of that, uh, it's a two-tapping weapon if you headshot to the head. Unlike the commissioner, the underboss has a quicker weapon draw, which makes it A, more effective for a point holder because time is everything, time is critical. So we would take the underboss over the commission for that reason, and it's still a two-tap to the head if you're really skillful at using the uh, underboss to begin with. So that's where it, that's why it's essential. Adrenaline shield for heavies. Uh, obviously, if you kill a person, you get more shield, right? There, there's more there's more shield increase. So that I'm definitely gonna actually, since we're talking about these abilities and stuff, I'll pull up the planet side too, wiki guide, and we'll talk about this more. All right, so let's talk about the adrenaline shield. Shield, adrenaline shield, there it is. All right, so why is the adrenaline shield good? Well, simple, right? It's identical to nanite mesh in a lot of ways, but the difference is, and nanite mesh is like the default launcher, right? Is that it recharges with each kill on an enemy. You know, that's really key, especially for a point holder because we need as much uptime as possible. The better you are at killing opponents, the more shield you get, right? And topped off with medics helping you out, man, that's like super key, bros. That's um, it's powerful, right? It's powerful, especially on their skilled player or a skilled point holder. Nano B5. So Nano B5 is, you know, pretty simple. Um, it reduces the amount of damage you take uh, from primary firearms, right? So that's why it's essential. Grenades can be what you like. And C4. Uh, C4 is extremely critical. That's that, that, that. This one, this utility here, honestly, in my opinion, especially for heavy assaults and 
or medics even more times than not, it cannot be replaced. And you know, to, to kind of explain why C4 is simple, it helps you kill tanks, it helps you kill maxes easily and effectively, it helps you kill large blobs of pushes as well. And without having this like force multiplier in your back pocket to pull out when you're fighting large amounts of overpop, you're gonna have problems. People will just overwhelm you, and you can put you will never be able to put enough bullets down range as a point holder, just because people generally or not will overpop you, and you know they'll try to kick you out of the base as soon as possible with that overpop. So C4 is like our you know leveler, right? It's our force multiplier to stop uh, large pushes and masses. So that's not optional. That that needs to be run, uh, regardless. And to kind of give you a nice little video on um, why it's important, here's one from series, not series, series Arshi's TV. Uh, on that topic, so let me go grab that for you guys right now because I know I have it here somewhere. Probably somewhere in this guide. One second, guys. Too large. I've been working on this way too long. Up oh, here it is. B-Way! B-Way is going to get destroyed with this max- Oh, they're being delivered! Pizza delivery! Pizza delivery! Pizza delivery! Pizza delivery! Pizza delivery! God, I want more pizza delivery in my life! Can I get a pizza delivery tonight? I want to eat! Hold on one second! can you please buy some pizza? I'm so hungry! There's so much pizza! What is happening? Oh, defensive shades! To stop them at the bottleneck! I feel like this is a tower defense game! Ladies and gentlemen, we just funneled the enemy down the line, and they just got pizza delivery to add the- ah! Okay, so, there's that and why C4 is effective, as you guys saw in that little clip uh, during my outfit spotlight. You had a large TR max crash, they came by and they were like, hey bros, we're gonna just wreck you right now in your point hold. You know, C4 as you guys saw in a squad setting. A couple dozen, you know, a dozen sticks this is all it takes to stop a large push of force multipliers like that. And, you know, you're saving a lot of um, <laughs> cash while you're doing it too, right? One stick of C4 does not cost as much as a max and um, extremely effective if you use it properly, which is why we have it. Alright, so now that we're done talking about safe, uh, C4, let's talk about Safeguard and Athlete. Um, I mentioned, I did mention in the guide, um, like, the, like, value and importance of it, but I think it's really best to kind of show you in video format, like, why Safeguard and Athlete are extremely important. So, we're gonna pull up a video here from Aetherium on his YouTube channel and kind of discuss that. Killing right, spree. Be done. Double kill. So as you guys saw there, that res, right? It was pretty quick from get up. That's because of Athlete and B, he's completely topped off from safeguard. And now, because of the extra 3.5 reduction damage that we talked about in the guide, he's going to come back stronger. You guys will, uh, will see that as a result here. Same bonus applies. Come back stronger. Double kill. Triple so that guy he just killed there, that guy probably had a really good chance of killing him if he didn't have safeguard, um, but because he can take extra bullets down range, he's also getting tethered from the medic behind him, and because of the use of athlete, you know, he, he's just downing people, right, as you can tell, this guy's taking every res. As a point holder, this is essentially how you should be playing, uh, for demonstration's sake. Taking every res, uh, using the loadout properly of safeguard and athlete, having adrenaline shield, which is what he has, and using an effective LMG that can put down people really quickly. Or times and not as a heavy assault, this is what it's gonna look like, uh, you know, in extreme detail and like really how to hold a base and take it. Or Ryan or many satellite. Multi kill. Headshot. As you can tell, they're now he's getting tethered by uh, Jessalyn, and he's gonna run in the room. Mutually assured. He's gonna take the next res uh, from Jessalyn now. Once it comes in, or Scar. Oops. And as you guys saw there, he got up right away. Right, the player that was shooting him was shooting his dead body at that point in time, 
and when he was shooting his dead body upon revive, uh, Theorem A with Safeguard was able to take more bullets than he should have if he didn't have it. And because of Athlete, he was like kind of like push, like doing a push up as he was getting up uh, to the box and ran right past the guy that was shooting him. So this floating zombie, A Theorem now, is now about to go wreck some, you know, some madhouse because of that. The loadout implant combination. Double kill. Look at that, right? That that just cleared the whole room. That's how powerful the implants can be um, when combined together. Killing spree. Double kill. Repeat customer. Triple kill. Repeat customer. The same thing applies here again. He died immediately, got back up because of safeguard. His health was completely topped off. And because of athlete, he was able to get back in cover fairly quickly, even without being shot, right? That's really, you know, the power like the power of point holding right there. If you do the implants and loadouts right. And Theorem, you know, in his regard, he is also a good shooter, so that's why he's downing these people pretty effectively and taking every res to do so. Um, but, you know, you won't, not everybody, especially our new players, will be able to shoot like this, but even, like, just watching play, you guys can tell already, like, the implants are helping him significantly to, like, do combat uh, with the enemy. Double kill. Triple kill. So here comes an enemy max, and this is kind of where the C4 and the loadouts kind of like combine together. So what Theorem's going to do now is he's going to do exactly what I described earlier, you guys, why, why C4 is critical, and we'll get to watch that now. Easy demolition, right? That max got hit by that C4, and the first thing he did was run. He's like, I am not going back in there. This guy almost ass blasted me, and now he, or now Theorem's coming after him, right? And he's gonna take his friends with him. There he goes. In a normal circumstance, without C4 and using med kits or some other utility, that max probably could have clapped that squad uh, more times than not. Especially if he was a good max user, right? So this is kind of where the tables turn in a small, in like a situation where the force multiplier, the max, is stronger than a squad. But well, the use of C4, we're able to, you know, level the playing field. Another demonstration again of the use of C4, right? He saw the harasser immediately, he was in range. Yeah, he could have hit him a rocket, but you know, that's not gonna be as effective as a C4 in this scenario. Double and boom, kill. it's gone. Welcome Look at that. Plan. Using that utility is powerful. And you guys now got to see a second instance of why C4 is so critical in a point holding squad. It's a triple kill. And by taking every res at the doorway, combined with Safeguard and Athlete, you guys can tell he's getting shot at again. That guy's sh directly shooting at him, but because of Athlete and Safeguard combined, um, he, A, he's taking more damage from this guy, and B, he probably dodged a couple bullets just getting up, you know, floating around uh, because the stomp animation uh, is being nullified due to Athlete, right? So, pretty powerful stuff, man. You know, this is just one guy in a medic at a doorway acting like there's six players, right? That's a, that's a, that's a type of, like, force multiplier you're doing by putting these together and using team cohesion and the, the uh, utility correctly Headshot. and on top of that as you guys saw we rewind a little bit he did have a shield placed there from his squad mate the engineer that there acts as a nice physical barrier for stopping enemies from destroying you as well right so that's kind of where you know having these things are key Headshot. Double kill. all right you know, there's that, guys. So that is like a little demonstration on why like, the combination of these implants, especially for the heavy soul, is powerful. 
Now we'll talk about the medic. So you guys kind of saw the medic do some action back around the work. Um, the, for the medic class, it's very simple, especially for the primary. They need flak armor. Uh, it's essential. Like their job is not to do combat really, but to enable the heavy to do combat. And as you guys saw, Theorem took a lot of grenades, hits. He got hit by harassers. He was hit by the max. That's a lot of you know damage he's taking from like other effects and stuff. He also got hit by you know debris and all the other other stuff as well. So. It's kind of critical to, uh, as a medic, if you're like tethering one of these crazy heavy assaults, you're like doing madness in the point hole building, to have flak armor. Um, you're not going to be really getting a lot of damage, getting direct damage enemy. That's a heavy assault's job. So you're worried about secondary damage. You're worried about getting hit by C4. You're worried about getting hit by frag grenades. You're worried about getting hit by air and all the other crazy stuff, right? So it's critical you have flak armor for that reason. Obviously, the revive grenade is a no option. You need that. That that is essential in your squad. Combat surge and assimilate is. Not, I would say, extremely necessary as a combo, but combat surgeon definitely is, since you know that allows you to have the ability to um, get more of your AOE of fuel help effects faster as you kill enemies or revive teammates, right? So we kind of talk about combat surgeon. Let's pull that up. The implants. Okay. It is combat surgeon kills and revives restore 30% of your nano re regen device energy and reviving the ally increases your resistance to small arms by 25% for 3.5 seconds just by the sound of that I, I think most of you guys can tell this thing is very very powerful um and you know combined with assimilate which is what I put on the loadout guide on a headshot kill instantly restore 200% shield and 10% of your maximum energy ability Right, that energy ability is your default AOE heal. So imagine combat surgeon, while killing people with headshots, restoring your AOE ability. You can basically press F and keep that topped off for a long period of time. If you're in an intense point hold situation and you need to help your heavy kill people because there's too many people flooding the doorway, right? This is where that's powerful. And combined with C4 on top of that, what's the point of medkits if you got utility like C4 and you have AOE heal? You're basically not a combat, you're like a medic anymore. You're a combat medic, right? You are, you are a powerful device uh, for your squad when needed. Although I did mention earlier, you shouldn't be really doing a lot of combat to begin with. But you know, in times of like tricky situations where shit is going down, and you are a medic, and your heavies having lot, your heavies are having a lot of trouble. Sometimes you need a little bit more firepower. This is where you come in, right? You press that F ability. Your heavies aren't dead yet. Good. Then you. St Pull out your gun or you pull out your C4 and you start chucking C4 out the doorway. You start hitting enemies in the head. And then all at the same time you're healing your dudes because you're holding your F button down, right? So that's kind of where it's key, right? You're, you're like the last channel. default backup in the set, that situation. But having that ability available to you when needed in a point hold situation makes you very powerful for your squad. Alright, so that's about medics. Um, this one's about the secondary medic bubble shield. We won't really get into this, but basically to kind of put, you're like more of a static medic meant to like revive your teammates from afar, which is why you have revive grenade bando and to keep yourself out of sticky situations. And the bubble shield, you know, is like a stationary dock, right? It's used to like keep your heavies topped off uh, on their shield, although it's not used as often. The implants are kind of just like made essential to keep you like topped off. It's got flak jacket, obviously, like we mentioned earlier, we need flak armor as a medic. It's kind of just uh, an implant to make sure you have it because you're running the uh, grenade bando for your revive grenade. And bionics is to give you an entire shield. You, if you're going to use the docking station anyway, you might as well have it for yourself, which is why our bionics comes in. Alright, to the other loadouts. And I really won't get too in-depth of care pace, but it's very simple. Um, as you guys saw in the Safeguard 4 video from A Theorem, basically the essential idea is as a medic, you will tether a care pace heavy. And you will keep him alive because care pace allows you to have an effective full shield of uh, health, right? But not shield, but like a full bar of health. Um, so a little bit of care pace here. Let's uh, control left F that. Channel. All right, there it is. Care pace. Your personal shield is removed and replaced with 500 additional health. Equipment that adds or modifies shield health does not stack with this implant. Care pace replaces an 500 health shield, 400 health of the infiltrator, and a second meter of 500 health. The max units basically you have a tire two tire green bars of uh life right instead of a shield life and shield right two green bars instead of one blue and one green super effective if uh you know medic is tethering you 
And as a carapace medic, you too should also have uh, the carapace loadout with combat surgeon and run some healing grenades so that, and obviously some C4. I uh, can't forget that. <laughs> it's an essential loadout to have just because if you're running carapace very heavy, you might as well run carapace for yourself too and top yourself off. And if you have healing grenades on top of that, you can effectively you heal moved. yourself and heal your team when you're doing it. Alright, with that said, let's get into uh, carapace slave and fix that utility. This is actually supposed to be C4, folks, uh, so my apologies about that. That shouldn't be there, rest of the kids. I was in Sirens experiment uh, from earlier. <laughs> C4 there as well, but, you know, it's basically the same as the uh, primary heavy loadout. The only difference is you have air pace instead of athlete. You want to use it. And safeguard is essential, right? And default rocket launcher here as well. Engineers. So engineers, honestly, they're all about utility, man. Um, as much demo as possible. If, usually, they're, usually they don't run C4 because you want them to bring shields, but when they can, man, have them bring C4 too. Uh, but shields are important. Having shields up, as you guys saw in the A Theorem video, it is, you know, a nice physical barrier to have. This physical barrier here is, like, super key to um, keeping enemies from approaching door and making them, like, fight through an door and psychologically speaking having that there tells the enemy oh it's occupied somebody's guarding it right and they're less inclined to push and they do see bodies there on top of that they're even more or less inclined to push until that threat is wiped out so it's kind of you know a we're playing mind games on them b we're giving us a physical barrier from the enemy and c utility man utility is uh important all right with that said that is the engineer loadout four stickies obviously uh, demolition we're gonna do some mega demo, throw four stickies out the doorway, keep the enemy away. And finally, uh, the infiltrator. Um, you guys know what the infiltrator is all about. He's the bolt, he is to give recon, and he's got four EMPs for one reason only. A, to buy time, and B, to really help squad wipe out enemies really quickly. Because if they have their shield gone, they only have 500 effective health and not 1,000. Blast them, right? And the implants are meant uh, for to help them bolting critical chain upon headshot will allow you to kill more enemies faster. Your, like your chamber time is much shorter of critical chain if you get a headshot. And assimilate, you know, it's to top you off, right? Give you more ability energy and also to allow you to, you know, restore those shields. So critical, nice, nice implant to have. All right, with that said, let's uh, get back into guide here for you guys so i'm going to end the video now because this kind of really explains section section a in general for you guys and get on the rest of the guide